What's up, heroes? My name is Silo Clone, and welcome back to Crystalline. Let's see how our next full day in Stonecrest is going to play out after finding those orphans who have been taking all the crystals for who they call the man. Let's see what happens as we prep to find him, hopefully this evening. I stir and stretch widely. Uh, that was the best sleep I've had since arriving to Terra. What time is it? I squint at the sun shining through the window. It seems like it's pretty late. I sit up, and the pongo bounces on the foot of the bed enthusiastically. Boy, boy. We haven't seen you in a while. I actually want to see a good screenshot of him. Oh! What did you get in here? Boy. He bounces again and rolls over to cuddle against me. Zack has already left the room. I wonder if anyone else is around. Throwing off my blankets, I get ready for the day and head downstairs. There are a few patrons already frequently frequenting the lobby, but no signs of my team. Kara said she was going to go get an early start, but I'm not sure where everyone else went. We did say we'd meet back up here this evening, so I guess I'll see them then. I haven't got anything planned today, though, so I'm going to take it easy. I begin walking towards the town square. I follow my feet as it wanders the streets, taking my time and enjoying the bustle of the town. I've forgotten how relaxing it is to have nothing on the agenda. Boy, boy. Eventually, we reach the square. Didn't all the pongo came with us. I recognize the statue of Elena. A small brown dog, only a little larger than the pongo, watches us. His tail wags slowly when he catches our attention. Pet the dog, play fetch. Ew, dogs. Bork, bark, barf, 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 woof, woof, woof. I'm a dog, barf, oh. Uh, we'll see if we can pet the dog. Hey, dog, are you lost? The dog wags his tail. I extend my hand as and he cautiously approaches. After giving me a few good exploratory sniffs, he barks excitedly. Good boy. His tongue lolls out and I scratch behind his ears. Boy. Don't you get jealous now. The pongo bounces angrily. The dog stares at the pongo as if noticing him for the first time. The pongo pounces and jumps even higher. The dog cowers and whines, Aww. Pongo, what's up with you? I go to pet the dog, but the pongo butts my hand away. Are you jealous? I reach out a hand and I pet the pongo, who seems to calm down slightly. The dog perks up as the pongo relaxes. He wags his tail as he nuzzles the pongo. Boy. The pongo bristles at the dog's touch and scrambles back. Boy, boy. He hops away, but the dog happily chases him. See, he makes new friends everywhere he goes. As the dog catches up, he looks the pongo, who grimaces. Ah, he's playing with you. Boy. A little girl races over to the dog, who barks excitedly at her presence. She throws her arms around him and holds him close as he licks her face. I thought I lost you. Suddenly, she notices the pongo and her eyes grow wide. Oh, you're so cute! Really? Yeah, you, little guy. You. She gently pats the pongo on the head, and his little frown melts into a smile. Aww. Boy, boy. Are you lost too? Boy, boy! He hops over to me. The girl looks over, then smiles shyly. Oh, um, hi. Hey, is that your dog? She nods. Thanks for finding him for me. Sometimes he's too fast and I can't catch him. Aw, it's no problem. 
Mocha sniffs around my feet and nudges my hand to be pet, but the pongo bounces between us. Oi! The girl giggles and waves. I guess we should be leaving. Bye-bye, little pongo friend. Thanks for keeping Mocha company. You're welcome, young girl. Pongo say thank you. <laughs> Bye. Before Mocha can escape again, the girl lip slips a leash around his collar, and the two of them gradually disappear from view. I look down at my pongo, who looks back up at me. Put him on his shoulder. He's fine where he is. You know what, he's he's a little he's a little upset by what we've done. He's gonna like being on the shoulder. I smile and pat his head affectionately. He squirms happily against me, then hops up onto my shoulder and nuzzles my face. No. How about we continue on that walk together, hmm? Bye. Together, we head further into town. I decide to check out some of the storefronts and streets that I didn't get a chance to see yesterday. The pongo wanders off whenever it gets too crowded, but he always seems to find his way back to me. After most of the day has passed, I decide it's time to return to the inn. Leanna, Emilia, and Zach are already there waiting. Leanna stands when I arrive. Here, I got you something. You got me something? She passes me a gauntlet similar to the one on her wrist. The sphere is inlaid. The sphere inlaid is the same color as Leanna's. That must be a wind crystal. Is this a manipulator? Yeah, I was thinking about your last attempt at casting, and I figured this might be more helpful with future training. You didn't have to do that. This was probably expensive. Having the manipulator as a focal point of concentration is how Amelia and I learned to cast. Thanks. Kara finally returns, and the attention shifts to her. The crystal pickup will happen soon. We should start heading over. Would make it sound like a drug deal, why don't you? Leanna nods. Once they complete the exchange, we should follow the guy to see if he leads us to their hideout. He might have other partners, so we should be on guard. I still can't think of why they'd want these crystals. Energy crystals have varying utilizations, some of which are outlawed. Now you've got my interest. Kara seems a bit surprised, but Leanna doesn't react to that. Thinking about what these outlawed utilizations could be makes me uneasy. We have our plan. Let's get started. Agreed. Gotta get going for this. We trace back to the ruins and find the abandoned house with the children. Instead of entering, we spread out, spread out around the perimeter to maximize visibility on anyone approaching. Kara and I stay close to the house and hide behind some fallen bricks. Our field of vision is limited, but we're close enough to overhear any conversations that take place inside. After we position ourselves, we wait. We don't know when the man's going to show up, and after about 20 minutes, I start to get fidgety. I wish the kids had given us a time. Who knows how long we'll be stuck out here for. My legs are starting to cramp, but as I shift, Kara shoots me a warning glance, and I force myself to push through it. Finally, a man approaches. He looks to be in his 20s, and surprisingly, wears something that resembles a beanie on his head. Carrie yanks my collar, so we duck down. She covers my mouth with her hand and puts a finger to her lips. Looks like our job is to listen. The others will be our eyes. I hear a door creak, followed by the faint sound of footsteps. Hey, yo, you punks got my crystals or what? Jesse Pinkman. Nice. I listen for any extra footsteps, but it sounds like the man came solo. Here. There's a rustling of a bag being opened. What is this? These crystals are weak, yo! That's all we could find. Nah, nah, this ain't good, man. Sorry. The boy's voice is weak. Huh. <laughs> the bag closes and the man grunts as he lifts it up. 
Wait, where are our coins? You'll get your payment when you deliver, yo. This is only half of what you promised. Scumbag. There's a silence. I carefully peek out to see the boy straining with his hands clenched. Fine. That's what I thought. The stranger lugs a bag over his shoulder. I quickly duck back down as he exit the exits the house. Time to go. I turn to face Kara, who wears a serious frown and has fury in her eyes. I don't think I've ever seen her angry before, let alone this angry. She looks like she's about to rip that guy's head off. Kara? Did you not see that? We should take him out now. Think about the bigger picture. Don't be stupid. Okay, now we're going to have to talk down Kara, so let's think about the bigger picture here. I can understand where her anger is coming from. I'm not happy that he treated him like dirt, too. But we got to think of the bigger picture here. Something evil is afoot. This could have consequences if we go after him now. He could just be a messenger. We have to stick to the plan. Kara clenches and unclenches her jaw. Then she nods, still fuming. I know you're right, but still. He'll get his justice soon enough. Let's hurry up and go. Yeah. We trail the man out of Stonecrest, making sure to stay behind buildings and keep to the shadows so as not to be spotted. Kara slips in and out of the alleys with ease, and it takes a lot of my concentration to not lose her. No wonder she's always sneaking up on us. I assume the rest of our team is also following him as I'm unable to spot them. That's for the best. The less chance of being noticed, the better. Outside of the city gates, it's a little harder to stay hidden as it opens out into a more open field. At least since we're spread out, it won't be easy for him to escape if he tries to. We successfully follow him to what looks like an abandoned train car. There's some kind of dark smoke emitting from the top. The man pauses and we crouch lower behind cover as he looks around. He doesn't spot any of us and enters the train. And we'll find out what's going on at this hippie car. Next time, I'm going to end the episode here. As always, if you did enjoy the video, let me know by hitting that like button down below or leaving a comment if you are new to the channel. Unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well, and I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.